Okay, so hi everyone. Um, we will have another video in number theory and there's one additional um, for the linear Diophantine equations. Uh, there's a lot of comments that is asking me to do more examples. So let's do more. Um, this will be in particular a solution. For example, how do we solve the LD LDE, that's the linear Diophantine equation, given in this um, form. So we have um, 7x minus 9y equals 3. So what I'm doing here, actually, what I'm using is my cell phone right now. I'm checking this app, and then I'm checking this new stylus that I have. And let's see if, if it will work on this video, and then let's have it. First, we need to remember the th a theorem that, um, that will help us in answering this uh, this question. Solve the li linear infinite equation, 7x plus rather minus y equals 3. So we have this theorem, 3.10, that we should uh, think about and we should understand the, the statement of the theorem. So theorem 3.10, in some books, it may be called like different in a different name, but um, in our book, we'll call it theorem 3.10. The LDE ax plus by equals c is said to be solvable. Let's emphasize that. Okay, so this LDE AX plus BY equals C is said to be solvable if and only if you have a certain D which is a factor of C, wherein you can say that uh, D divides C, in other words, where you your D is defined as the greatest common divisor of the two coefficients of your variables X and Y. So you have A and B. So whatever is the GCD of your coefficients, make sure that it is a factor of your right-hand side, which is your C, and then you can therefore say that the theorem, or rather the, the equation given, is solvable, and it is a Diophantine equation for sure. Now, the next statement of the theorem is that if you have a certain... Say you have a certain uh, X sub 0. Sorry, that's an X sub 0 and a y sub zero, which is a particular solution of a given LDE. Therefore, all the solutions are given in this form. Okay, so we have all your x's, uh, let, let this be x sub n, so for all the t's that we have, so your x's are defined as the first value that you have plus b over d, this is your coefficient of your y divided by the d, the gcd of your of the coefficients and times this t where your t is in terms of all integers likewise to get the values of all the y's that you have get uh which is this you have your the y's of zero which is the particular solution that you got minus the coefficient of the x divided by their the gcd of the of the coefficients multiplied by t so that's what we want to think and what we want to use in, in this video and then we're going to make use of this and then we'll find the general solution, all the solutions of the example that we have been uh, given here. So let's try to find it. First, we need to make sure that this is solvable. Okay, first things first, make sure that this LDE is solvable itself. So the the formula or the, the way to determine that is we need to get the value of D first. Remember that your D is the the coefficients, uh, rather the GCD of the coefficients of, of X and Y. So um, let's write here solution. Okay. So we need to get first the gcd so we determine the d our d value which is equal to the gcd of a and b well we need to remember that this is in the form of ax minus by equals c so we have your a here which is seven um b here as negative nine so we have seven and negative nine doesn't matter it can be positive nine so the greatest common factor uh between the two uh what would that be so you can just uh get it and make use of the euclidean algorithm but it doesn't uh, we don't need to do that um this will be equal to what do you think what's their gcd okay so um one thing you can see here is that seven is a prime number actually so you know we have a, a remark or a theorem maybe that whenever you find the gcd of 
of any two numbers and one of them any one of them at least one of them is a prime number so therefore they should be relatively prime so therefore the gcd of d is going to be one which makes things easier for us um because one is a factor of all numbers so it's like a universal factor so clearly we can say that one divides three so uh, we can therefore say that uh, well clearly one where d divides three which is your c hence this lde is solvable now if it is solvable we can move on to the next part wherein we are gonna make use of this information here which is these x and y so in order for us to get all the all the solutions of that problem so we should obtain all the integer solutions of this problem so let's make it bigger and we can see making use of this information here so we can get all the general formula the general solution of our x is going to be x sub zero first we need to understand and we need to find one particular solution of x and y so what multiples of seven deduct that by a multiple of nine and what you'll have is a positive three okay so one thing you can find of and by inspection and by trial and error you can get um seven as three so you multiply it seven by three so that's gonna give us sorry that looks like a five that's gonna give you 21 um ah uh, sorry about that that's gonna give you a third a, thir a th 21 okay and then um you're gonna substitute y to be 2 so you know 21 minus 18 that's 9 times 2 is gonna give you 3 so that's one particular solution so we're gonna set that as our x sub 0 which is gonna be 3 and then our y sub 0 which is going to be 2 positive 2 so we have 3 and 2 so to get the to get all of the possible the general formula in fact of x we need to put all x sub zero plus b over d times t so whatever t is so some books would like to call it as k actually instead of t so anyways what we're, what is the general formula for the x so what we have is um x is going to be equal to the particular solution that we got which is equal to 3 okay plus um, we have b over d so our b is clearly minus 9 over d so d is 1 so instead of plus instead we're gonna write minus 9 here minus 9 and then um, that's gonna be multiplied by t Okay, so we have all our x's in the form of 3 um, minus 9t. Okay. Um, next up is um, our y values. So our y, sorry, that's a t. Our y is going to be our first solution for the y sub 0. That's 2 um, minus our a is positive. So that's going to give us um, our a is positive, though it's y minus this. So we're going to make it negative. So 2 um, minus 7 over 1. So that's going to give us 7. And then multiply that by t. Sorry, uh, the space is quite in not enough. So let's try to fit it. 7 t. Okay. So these are our solutions. So our general solution for the x is x equals 3 minus 9 t. And for y, we have 2 minus 7 t okay now you may want to check and you try to you know to try to input positive one say t is one so say t equals one so just try to imagine it i think we have no more space um yeah we do have something here so for example if your t is equal to one so your x would be uh your x would be like uh well, this is 1. This is going to give us minus 6. And your y would be, uh, that's going to give you uh, minus 5. 
and that's for sure one solution of uh, of the problem. So try to input. So we have um, ch just to check. So we have seven times negative six minus um, that's going to give us nine times negative five. It should be equal to three though. Negative nine. I rather um negative. 9 times negative 5. Okay, so it should be equal to negative 3. So we have this is going to become negative, so um, 42. This is going to become positive 45. So clearly you can see that the answer is positive 3, which makes it clear that this is a general solution. So if you want to check more, you can. And But, you know, by, by the theorem 3.10, it guarantees that all of the solutions will be in that form. Okay, so that's one example. I'm going to provide more examples of this um, as requested. Um, kind of wait for my other videos. And for sure, I'm going to provide more examples. So you can take a, a picture of this if you want to get the total, the whole picture. Okay, so thank you very much for that. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope to see you soon. I'll be uploading more videos. And um, thank you very much. Okay.